So 30 years as a priest, you came of age in the Jesus movement in the early 70s. Uh, you, were, you were clergy in the Assemblies of God. You left that behind. You embraced orthodoxy, which uh, I came to the orthodox faith in the early 2000s. And so even then, it was something that you had to go find. So obviously, coming when you did, the Orthodox faith would have been something that you would have had to have gone searching for. It certainly didn't come find you. So what I want to hear from you, Father, about your faith journey is what was it that as an evangelical, uh, we'll give it your background, what attracted you to the Orthodox Church? And how can we learn from your experience and, and intelligently present the faith once delivered to the saints to evangelicals that are surrounding us in our neighborhoods, our, our places of work, and everywhere else? Well, in my personal experience, it was worship that brought me uh, to the Orthodox Church. Um, the One of the last, the, the last Assemblies of God Church that I served in, I was not, I was the assistant pastor as well as uh, uh, what they called the worship leader. And so I would lead worship uh, in, in all the services. And um, because of that, I, I had done quite a bit of study of the whole um, understanding of worship in the scriptures, worship and praise. Uh, and um, uh, I, because I loved history, um, I decided to do a study on worship in the early church. How did the early church worship? And um, just so happened to be that I met a fellow who was a, a priest in the Episcopal church who had been Assemblies of God, interestingly enough. And um, uh, he, I said to him, I said, you know, where, this, this Book of Common Prayer, this, um, the way you worship, you know, did you like have a committee or something that met together and decided, you know, that uh, this is how we're going to do it, you know? And uh, he looked at me, he said, he said, um, he said, no, 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 no. He said, our, our, the, our way of worship is based upon the early church's way of worship. And I looked at him and I said, well, how did you, how did you find out about that? And he said, well, you, have you ever read the church fathers? And I said, the church who? <laughs> and um, so he, you know, he suggested that I read Justin Martyr and I read some of the other fathers who kind of described what worship was like in uh, the, the church right after the completion of the New Testament. And um, so I, I did so. I went and got some of those texts and read them, and they were very, very troublesome to me. Because not only did I see how they worshipped, that it was liturgical worship, but it was also that those that they were sacramental, hierarchical, uh, and all of those things, which of course in my mind were um, absolutely the antithesis of what it meant to worship in the Spirit, which is of course what we Pentecostals believed was what was most important a sort of free worship, uh, spontaneity, and things of that nature. And uh, so when I, when I read this, I thought, okay, but also the early church at that time was charismatic. Uh, and so how can a church be charismatic and liturgical? How can a church be charismatic and sacramental? How can a, how can a church be charismatic and evangelical and hierarchical, okay? But the early church was all those things. The early church was hierarchical, liturgical, sacramental, charismatic, evangelical, uh, all of those things. So, so the early church obviously continued to live a very, uh, a very uh, alive, spirit-filled uh, life, and also uh, worship liturgically. And um, so... It was in studying that, you know, I, I, I looked at the Roman Catholic Church and I had quite a bit of difficulty with, with much of their theology because I felt it was not, not only was it not 
uh, consistent with Scripture, but it wasn't even consistent with the early church of the first three, four hundred years, at least the Roman Catholic Church as we see it now. The Episcopal Church was imploding at that period of time. Uh, so was the Lutheran Church. And so uh, I thought, well, let's, you know, somebody said, well, have you ever ever looked at the Orthodox Church? Well, my my ignorance, in my ignorance, I thought the Orthodox Church was just a, 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 a branch of the Roman Catholic Church in which their bishops wore funny hats. That was that was about the extent of my learning. But uh, after reading uh, not Clistos Ware's book, The Orthodox Church, but Father John Meyendorf's book, The Orthodox Church, which a lot of people are unaware that Father John wrote wrote uh, this book, because Bishop Ware's book, of course, is is uh, um, is kind of like the the text for many people. Mm -hmm. But after reading Father John Meyendorf's book. Um, and the only way I can describe it is that he was answering questions that I didn't even know I had. Okay. Uh, they were questions that were way, way back somewhere. But reading his book brought out things that um, answered questions that, you know, I had never even thought of before. Mm -hmm. And uh, my, my experience of coming into the Orthodox Church was not... Um, it was not a pleasant experience in some ways. <laughs> you know, I would visit churches and I won't say what I won't say what ethnic group they were from, but I was basically told uh, I was asked, you know, what my uh, what are your people? And I said, uh, I don't understand. What do you mean? What what are my people? Well, mm -hmm. where are your people from? I said, Ohio. No, 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 not Ohio. Uh, where 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 are your was your great 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 great? Oh, I said from Ireland, and they and they just came around and said, "Oh, you are supposed to be Roman Catholic," because I was Irish. Right. Uh, Orthodox Church is only for, and then they would go through the line of the whole group, you know, mm -hmm. Greek, Russian, Bulgarian, whatever. And I mean, I had read enough to know that no, that's not the case. Uh, that the Orthodox Church is for the whole world. And again, if the Orthodox Church is the fullness of the faith, and we have a responsibility to share that fullness of the faith with everyone, churched people and non-churched people, uh, you know, there are a lot of there are a lot of very very good, committed, zealous Protestant Christians and Roman Catholic Christians out there who. Um, you know, they 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 realize that they have reached sort of like a glass ceiling spiritually. And um, uh, when they come to the Orthodox Church or, or they read about the Orthodox faith, they realize that uh, um, it's only in the Orthodox Church that there is no glass ceiling. Um, you know, um, being saved is not the end. Uh, dying and going to heaven is not the end, uh, that we continue to grow and progress uh, into the image and likeness of Christ, uh, deification and theosis, uh, and for eternity. And we never reach, we never reach the end. We are constantly, because God is unfathomable, and God uh, cannot be measured. There is no end to God. And so, therefore, uh, it's the same. It's the same as uh, for our for our understanding of growth and salvation. And it, only the Orthodox Church teaches this. I mean, even in the Roman Catholic Church, they they teach that once one has received, uh, one, once once one has reached this kind of beatific vision of God, then you 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 rest there. Uh, but for orthodoxy, we are we are our, our spirit will continually grow, continually, continually, continually after we enter the kingdom, because there is no end to to God's glory. And we share in that glory. Now, I don't know about you, but that sounds to me like a message uh, that many people uh, would like to hear and need to hear. Mm -hmm. And we need to share.
And uh, that's new thinking for many, especially cradle Orthodox people. Mm -hmm. uh, many of our many of our hierarchs they they this is a new concept for them too, and uh, but the history of the church and the fact that orthodoxy um, has spread around the world is a testimony uh, to the fact of the Orthodox Church's Catholicity, uh, but we we have to live out that Catholicity. 